Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello friends, today we will be talking on Palmer's Spaces of Hand. I am Dr. Daksha Dikshit, Professor of Anatomy, Jawaharlal Nehru Medical College, Kerry Academy of Higher Education and Research, Belagavi. Let us first see a clinical case scenario. A 22 year old male accidentally injured the Palmer aspect of his thumb with a thorn prick. Few days later, he presented to the OPD with fever, throbbing pain and swelling on the lateral side of the palm. The diagnosis given was of thinner space infection. As we go through the lecture, we will come to know why these symptoms have come up and how the diagnosis was reached. We will be discussing the palmar spaces of the hand under these following headings. Introduction mid palmar space, thinner space, the lumbrical canals or the lumbrical spaces, pulp space, adductor space and then finally we would see some applied anatomy aspects. Introduction. When we see the palmar aspect of the hand, we see the thinner eminence on the radial side and the hypothenar eminence on the ulnar side of the hand. In between these two eminences, the triangular area is where we see the palmar aponeurosis which is a modification of the deep fascia. Deep to the palmar aponeurosis lie the long flexor tendons of the digits along with the lumbrical muscles. Deep to these structures, the fascia shows the potential spaces which are called as the palmar spaces. From the under surface of the fascia below these tendons and lumbricals, there are three fibrous septae which go deeper towards the metacarpal bones. And these septae are the medial, intermediate and the lateral intermuscular septae. And it is these septae which divide the central part of the palm into the potential spaces which are the mid palmar space and the thinner space. So, the fascia of the palm is continuous with the antibrachial fascia proximally and also with the fascia of the dorsum of the hand. Palmar fascia is thin over the thinner and the hypothenar eminences, forming the thinner and the hypothenar fascia respectively. Palmar fascia is thick centrally where it forms the fibrous palmar aponeurosis and in the fingers too it is thick where it forms the digital sheets. Now we see a picture which shows us the facial covering or we see details of the synovial sheet and the palmar aponeurosis. As is seen in this picture, we see the hypothenar muscles on the medial side whereas the thinner muscles are seen on the lateral or the radial side. In the center hollow of the palm, we see this triangular palmar aponeurosis which has got an apex which is proximally related to the flexor retinaculum and it has got a base which is related to the heads of the metacarpal bones. What we also see here are the two types of fibers which the palmar aponeurosis shows. The longitudinally running fibers of the palmar aponeurosis and the transverse fibers of the palmar aponeurosis. Deep to the palmar aponeurosis, we see the long flexor tendons surrounded by the synovial sheets. 
what is seen here are the synovial sheets covering the long flexor tendons. What we see here is the tendon of the flexor digitorum superficialis and deep to it lies the tendon of the flexor digitorum profundus. Both these tendons which go towards individual digits are covered by synovial sheet and the synovial sheet in turn is covered by the fibrous digital sheet. Distal to apex, the palmar aponeurosis forms four longitudinal digital bands or rays that radiate from the apex and attach distally to the basis of the proximal phalanges and also become continuous with the fibrous digital sheets. Between the flexor tendons and the fascia covering the deep palmar muscles are two potential spaces, the thinner space and the mid palmar space. Between these spaces, strong intermediate fibrous septum is seen which is attached to the third metacarpal bone. Let us see the same in this transverse section passing through the palm. What we see here on the anterior surface is the palmar aponeurosis. Deep to it we see the superficial palmar arch. Deep to that we see the tendons of the flexor digitorum superficialis and deeper are the tendons of the flexor digitorum profundus. What we see on the medial aspect is the hypothinner eminence while laterally is the thinner eminence having the presence of the thinner muscles. We need to appreciate here the three fibrous septae. Running from the lateral border of the palmar aponeurosis and covering the thinner muscles is the lateral intermuscular septum. It goes up to the first metacarpal bone. Similarly, running from the same lateral border of the palmar aponeurosis and going deeper towards the third metacarpal bone is the intermediate septum. The space which is there between these two septae is the thinner space. Whereas from the medial border of the palmar aponeurosis, another septae, septum goes towards the fifth metacarpal bone and thus a large facial space between the medial intermuscular septum and the lateral septum is the mid palmar space. So, here we see clear view of the thinner space which is between the lateral septum and the intermediate septum while we also see the mid palmar space which lies between the intermediate septum and the medial septum. What we see on the dorsal aspect are the metacarpal bones with the muscles in between and dorsal most we see two dorsal spaces that is the dorsal subcutaneous space and the dorsal subaponeurotic space. Let us now again see how the formation of these palmar spaces occurs. As I said, there are three septae arising from the palmar aponeurosis, the lateral septum, the intermediate septum and the medial septum. The lateral septum arises from the lateral margin of the palmar aponeurosis and gets attached to the first metacarpal. The intermediate septum arises from the lateral margin of the palmar aponeurosis and gets attached to the third metacarpal while the medial septum arises from the medial margin of the palmar aponeurosis and gets attached to the fifth metacarpal. Such it divides the palm into three compartments, a lateral compartment which is between the lateral and intermedium septae that is the thinner space, the intermediate compartment which lies between the intermediate and the medial septae encloses the mid palmar space 
whereas the medial compartment which lies between the medial or it lies medial to the medial septum is the hypothenar space. Thus, we understand that there are three septae and three compartments. The same is seen in this picture. The lateral septum as I said is going to come from the lateral margin of the palmar aponeurosis going towards the first metacarpal. The intermediate septum comes from the lateral border of the palmar aponeurosis and goes towards the third metacarpal whereas the medial septum starts from the medial border of the palmar aponeurosis and goes and attaches to the fifth metacarpal. Thus there are two spaces one is the thinner space which is seen between the lateral septum and the intermediate septum whereas the space between the intermediate septum and the medial septum is the mid palmar space. Medial to the medial septum lies the hypothenar space which contains the hypothenar muscles. Thus we appreciate the two spaces the thinner space and the mid palmar space. Let us now see the boundaries of the mid palmar space. As is obvious that it is going to be bounded by anterior posterior aspect medial lateral proximal and distal. The anterior boundary is by the palmar aponeurosis. Posteriorly this space is bounded by third and fourth dorsal and palmar entrosci muscles, third to fifth metacarpal bones and partly by the fascia covering the adductor pollicis muscle. Medial boundary of this space is done by the medial septum which separates it from the hypothenar space or hypothenar compartment. Laterally it is bounded by the intermediate septum which separates it from the thinner space. Proximally the space is closed off by the flexor tendon synovial sheet attached to the carpal bones and the carpal tunnel. Distally the space is continuous with the appropriate lumbrical canal. Let us now see what is the lumbrical canal. Lumbrical canal is a potential space surrounding the tendon of each lumbrical muscle and is normally filled with connective tissue. Its tubular canal of fascia which in is a lumbrical muscle running. So, it is nothing but a tubular canal of fascia through which a lumbrical muscle runs. Proximally it communicates with the thinner or the mid palmar space. The picture here shows us the lumbrical canals. What we see here on the lateral aspect is the thinner space whereas medially we see the mid palmar space. What we see here are the four lumbrical canals nothing but potential facial canals through which the lumbrical muscles run. Let us now see another picture which shows us the clear view of the boundaries of the mid palmar space. Anteriorly the mid palmar space is bounded by the palmar aponeurosis. Posteriorly it is bounded by the third, fourth and fifth metacarpal bones and the palmar and dorsal entrosci between them. Laterally it is bounded by the intermediate septum which separates it from the thinner space. Medially it is bounded by the medial septum which separates it from the hypothenar compartment. What we can also see here are the contents of the mid palmar space. The contents of the mid palmar space would be the tendons of flexor digitorum superficialis, the tendons of flexor digitorum profundus meant for the middle 
ring and the little fingers. So, tendons of the flexor digitorum superficialis and flexor digitorum profundus, only those which are going to the middle ring and the little fingers along with their synovial sheets. Third, second, third and fourth lumbrical muscles. Superficial palmar arterial arch with the digital branches and the digital nerves supplying the medial three and a half fingers. This space is continuous with the anterior compartment of the forearm via the carpal tunnel. Let us see the contents of the palmar space in this picture. Anteriorly, we see the palmar aponeurosis. Deep to it, we see the superficial palmar arch. We also see the ulnar nerve and the digital branches of the median nerve. Other contents are the tendons of the flexor digitorum superficialis, the tendons of the flexor digitorum profundus, those going to the middle ring and the little finger. Also seen as contents are the third, second, third and fourth lumbrical muscles. So, the long tendons for the middle ring and little finger, the superficial palmar arch with its digital branches, digital nerves supplying the medial three and a half fingers, and the second, third and fourth lumbrical muscles are the contents of the medial or the mid palmar space. Let us now go on to see the thinner space. The thinner space as we have already said is bounded by the lateral septum and the intermediate septum. It is a triangular space seen on the lateral aspect of the palm. Boundaries again would be studied as anterior, posterior, medial, lateral, proximal and distal boundaries. The thinner space is bounded anteriorly by the palmar aponeurosis. Posterior boundary is formed by the second metacarpal bone, the first and the second dorsal and palmar introsci muscles the transverse head of adductor pollicis muscle. The medial boundary is formed by the intermediate palmar septum which separates it from the mid palmar space. Lateral boundary is formed by the lateral septum along with the tendon of the flexor pollicis longus and its synovial sheet. Proximally, this space is closed off at the wrist and distally it is continuous with the web space between the thumb and the index finger. Let us see the contents of the thinner space. The contents here would be the tendon of flexor pollicis longus along with its synovial sheet, the long flexor tendons of index finger which is the tendon of flexor digitorum superficialis and flexor digitorum profundus along with its synovial sheet, the first lumbrical muscle, digital vessels and nerves that supply the lateral one and a half fingers. Let us now see the boundaries and contents of the thinner space. As is shown here, the thinner space is bounded anteriorly by the palmar aponeurosis. It is bounded posteriorly by the first and the second metacarpal bone and the palmar and dorsal introsci related to these bones. Also by the transverse head of the adductor pollicis muscle. It is bounded laterally by the lateral septum which separates it from the thinner space. It is bounded medially by the intermediate septum which separates it from the mid palmar space. Also seen here are the contents of the thinner space. 
the tendon of flexor pollicis longus surrounded by its synovial sheet the long tendons for the index finger that is the tendon of the flexor digitorum superficialis and the flexor digitorum profundus along with the synovial sheets the first lumbrical muscle and the digital vessels and nerves supplying the lateral one and a half fingers so that finishes with the boundaries and contents of the thinner space let us now move on to the pulp space the pulp space is seen related to the palmar aspect or the palmar skin of the distal phalanx spaces between the skin covering the palmar surface going down up to the distal phalanx of the digits here in there are fibrous septae which are radiating from the palmar aspect of the skin going deep and getting attached to the periosteum of the distal phalanx thus dividing this space into tight compartments which are filled with subcutaneous fat and the blood vessels so the deep fascia of the pulp of each finger will fuse with the periosteum of the terminal or the distal phalanx just distal to the insertion of the long flexor tendons and thus it closes off a tightly bound facial compartment which is known as the pulp space each pulp space is divided by numerous fibrous septae with fat in between it contains the terminal branches of the digital artery that supply the diaphysis or the distal 4/5 of the terminal or distal phalanx these digital arteries pass through the fibrous septae and supply blood to the terminal 4/5 of the distal phalanx whereas the proximal 1/5 of the distal phalanx receives blood from different digital arteries which do not pass through the fibrous septae the same is seen here in this picture this is a sagittal section passing through the digital phalanx what we see here is the palmar skin this is the distal phalanx and what we see here are the fibrous septae which radiate from the palmar skin and go up to the periosteum of the distal phalanx in between these septae what are seen are the tight compartments which are filled with the subcutaneous fat and the digital vessels the same is seen here in a cross section passing through the distal phalanx these are the fibrous septae radiating from the skin and getting attached to the periosteum of the distal phalanx so the spaces between them are filled with the subcutaneous fat tight fibrous compartments filled with subcutaneous fat and the blood vessels now we go on to see the other spaces those are the digital synovial sheet radial bursa ulnar bursa peronas space dorsal subcutaneous space dorsal subaponeurotic space space around the hypothenar muscles and space around the thinner muscles let us see the digital synovial sheets these are nothing but synovial sheets which cover the tendons which are going towards the digits proximally we see them as a common sheet for the digital flexors laterally we see the sheet for the flexor pollicis longus and the sheet for the flexor carpi radialis as we go distally the common sheet which was meant for the digital tendons gives continuity to the tendons going on to the little finger whereas the tendons going on to the index middle and the ring finger have a discontinuous synovial sheet which is there again only for the digital aspects it is not continuous with the common synovial sheet flexor synovial sheets these are 
tubular sheet of synovial membrane covering the long flexor tendons. In the second to fourth digit, they run from the head of the metacarpal up to the base of the distal phalanx. In the thumb and the little finger, it covers all throughout from the distal phalanx to the palm then under the flexor retinaculum up to the distal forearm. As has been said earlier, there is continuity of the synovial sheets in the thumb and the little finger. Synovial sheet of the fifth digit also covers the long tendons of the second to fourth fingers of the palm. Extension of the synovial sheet proximal to the wrist is seen from the thumb which is called as the radial bursa and a similar extension from the little finger is called the radial bursa. This picture shows us a clear view of the radial bursa which continues up from the synovial sheets of the thumb and the ulnar bursa which continues up from the synovial sheet of the little finger. This is what we have already seen a clearer view of the same is shown here. Here proximally we see the common synovial sheet which is meant for the flexor tendons of the second, third, fourth and fifth fingers. This sheet is distally continuous with the little finger whereas the synovial sheets for the second, third and the fourth finger are discontinuous with this common flexor synovial sheet. Why do you think there is no synovial sheet continuity in the second, third and fourth digital tendons? If you have realized that it is because of the space which is required for the origin of the lumbrical muscles from the tendons of the flexor digitorum profundus. Hence, the flexor synovial sheets of the second, third and the fourth digits have got the discontinuity because that bare area is required over the tendon of the flexor digitorum profundus in order to give origin for the lumbrical muscles. Let us now go on to see the peronas space. This lies deep to the flexor tendons in the distal part of the forearm. What are the boundaries of the perona space? It is bounded anteriorly by the tendons of flexor digitorum superficialis, flexor digitorum profundus and flexor pollicis longus along with the synovial sheet, the radial and the ulnar bursa. Posteriorly, the space is bounded by the pronator quadratus muscle and the introscious membrane of the forearm. Distally, it extends up to the wrist. Proximally, the space is continuous with the intermuscular space between the muscles of the forearm. The upper margin of the perona space extends up to the attachment of the flexor digitorum superficialis at the anterior oblique line of the radius and also laterally and medially it extends up to the lateral and medial border of the forearm. An applied anatomy point to be remembered here is that the infection from an ulnar bursa can very easily reach the forearm through the space of perona. The treatment for this type of infectious spread would be an incision taken on the lateral and the medial borders of the forearm to drain the pus collection. This shows us a section through the lower part of the forearm and the digit to show a clearer view of the perona space. What we see here are the phalanges, the metacarpal bone, the carpals 
and the lower part of the forearm bone. The flexor tendons going towards the digit are seen here along with the synovial sheet. What we see here is the mid palmar space. As we go proximally, we see the pronator quadratus muscle attached to the distal part of the forearm bone and just anterior to it, this space which is seen which lies deeper to the flexor tendons and their synovial sheets and superficial to the pronator quadratus muscle, this space is the peronas space. Another picture which shows us the proximal attachment of the space of perona. The space of perona proximally is continuous with the intramuscular space between the muscles of the forearm. The upper margin or the upper attachment or extent of the perona space is up to the attachment of the flexor digitorum superficialis at the anterior oblique line of the radius. What is seen here on the dry bone radius is the anterior oblique line which gives attachment or which is the proximal extent of the space of perona. Also what is seen in the adjoining picture are the various origins of the flexor digitorum superficialis. What we see here is the humero ulnar head of the flexor digitorum superficialis. Here is the radial head of the flexor digitorum superficialis taking its origin from the oblique anterior oblique line of the radius and that is how the fleshy belly of the flexor digitorum superficialis is formed. So the proximal attachment of the space of perona is up to the attachment of the flexor digitorum superficialis on the anterior oblique line of the radius and also lateral and medial extent is up to the lateral and medial border of the forearm. Let us now move on to the dorsal spaces. On the dorsum, the areolar tissue is much looser than what is seen in the palm. The extensors of the fingers are connected to each other by fibrous tissue which along with the extensor tendons forms an aponeurotic barrier between two dorsal spaces. These are the dorsal subcutaneous space and the dorsal subaponeurotic space. These spaces are continuous proximally with the subcutaneous tissue of the forearm and distally they are continuous with the subcutaneous tissue of the webs of the fingers. This picture shows us these dorsal spaces. Dorsally we see here the dorsal subcutaneous space. Deeper to it are the extensor tendons with the fibrous sheets in between them and deeper to this is the dorsal subaponeurotic space. So two dorsal spaces, the dorsal subcutaneous space and the dorsal subaponeurotic space. Let us now go on to the applied anatomy aspects. Infections of the hand. The flexor synovial sheets of the thumb and the little finger are continuous throughout the palm. They have potential to spread the infection to the palm, communicate with other synovial sheets within the carpal tunnel. Because the palmar fascia is thick and strong, the swellings resulting from hand infections usually appear on the dorsum of the hand where the fascia is much thinner. The facial spaces of the palm become infected and distended with pus due to spread of infection in acute superative tenosynovitis. Rarely they may become infected after penetrating wounds due to falling on dirty pins or needles. 
deep infections of the palm are not confined to any particular space. Pulp space infection or felon. It's common and a serious condition mostly occurs in the thumb or the index finger. The bacteria enter the space by pin pricks or pricks from sewing needles. Accumulation of inflammatory exudate increases the pressure in the pulp space. If left untreated, the infection of the terminal phalanx occurs. This may lead to necrosis of the diaphysis in children due to pressure on the vessels supplying the diaphysis that pass through the pulp space. The proximal one-fifth of the distal phalanx or the epiphysis is saved as it receives its arterial supply just proximal to the pulp space. Pulp space infection, if left untreated, could lead to spread of infection to the digital synovial sheet of that particular finger. Fracture of mid shaft or injury to the finger webs could lead to infection of the spaces. Infections of these spaces would be drained by taking incision as follows. For thinner space, the incision is taken in the web space between the index finger and the thumb and that is how the pus is drained. For the mid palmar space, the incision is taken in the web space between the middle and ring finger or the ring finger and the little finger. That is how the infectious pus is drained through these spaces. Thus, we have seen the various spaces of the palmar aspect of the hand. We first went on to see the various septae that is the three septae which are given off from the palmar aponeurosis, the lateral septum, the intermediate septum and the medial septum and how they divide the facial compartments into thinner space, the mid palmar space and the hypothinner space. We then went on to discuss the details of the mid palmar space, its boundaries and its contents. We then did the thinner space, its boundaries and its contents. We saw the details of the pulp space. Then we also went on to see the other spaces related to the hand and the forearm, majorly going into details of the synovial sheets, the fibrous flexor sheets, the peronas space, the dorsal subcutaneous and the dorsal subponeuratic space. And then finally, we went on to see the applied anatomy aspects. Now, I think the case scenario which we saw at the beginning of the class has been made very clear because any injury to the spaces or to the digits could lead to infection which spreads into the mid palmar space or the thinner space giving rise to uh, infection collection of superative material or pus in the mid palmar or the thinner space which will then give rise to pain, fever and will also give rise to swelling in that particular space. We also saw how these infections are to be drained by taking the particular incisions over the respective web spaces. This is a picture showing you the palmar space infections. As is seen here, we can see a swelling over the thinner space which is seen as a bulge just medial to the thinner eminence. Another picture showing us the pulp space infection. What we see here is a swelling over the distal phalanx of the particular finger. This is due to an injury or a pin prick which has occurred and that has led to infection and swelling of the distal phalanx. So, that is a pulp space infection. Thank you.